Good morning, everybody. How is everybody today? I'm just going to get signed on here. And let's hope that the weather will cooperate today. Come on, let's pop up on the screen here. There we are. While everyone's signing on, I'm going to go ahead and sign into the group. I personally love days like today. How about everybody else? I know it's been pretty hot, so sometimes it is kind of nice to have days where it's a little bit cloudy, right? So... Okay, so while everyone is signing on and joining in this morning, so excited to share that the catalog has launched for 2021. And so um, we actually get to look inside now. And um, it actually is looking a little blurry. Do I need to come in or do I need to go out? Let's see, maybe come in down. Um, if somebody can let me know if theirs looks blurry on my end, it might look a little blurry. So just let me know if um, you're blurry as well and we'll see how we can fix that. So let me come this way a little bit, but maybe. So how's everybody doing? What have you got drinking? I know that Saturday mornings is coffee and a card. I do apologize. Uh, I didn't get to go on Wednesday night. I was definitely um, not able to come on. So actually, I think I need to go this way. Let's go back a little bit. I apologize. We'll get this going here. Let's see. Why is this not cooperating this morning? There we go. Oh, good morning, Michelle. Okay. Hello. Hopefully we've got it fixed now. So anyway, the new catalog has launched and um, if there's anything in particular that, uh, for those of you who have, who have received your catalogs, that you want me to go over or clarify. I don't want to spend this morning doing that because that can take some time and I'm excited about this morning's project. So I just kind of want to jump right in. Um, I see over in the corner, since remember it is lagged when I um, come on. So I see that you can see my project that we're going to be doing this morning or one like it, I should say, because it's got some fun techniques that I want to make sure to show everybody. So this is what we are going to be um, showing you how to make today. And since the catalog has launched, I do get to go ahead and show you inside the catalog. So let's go ahead and do that. What I'm actually going to be showing you today is on page 10 of the new catalog. Um, yes, Michelle, Mason Jar. And it's got a fun technique. I know you're probably not going to be able to see it, but I actually have a uh, water technique that I did that makes it look like it actually has water. So I thought that you might like that. So that's why I wanted to jump right in this morning. So I do want to explain a couple of things about this particular set. This set is called Flowers for Every Season. There's a couple of things that I do want to explain about the catalog it that this particular one is a suite you can purchase it as a suite or individually when you purchase things as a suite for example this one is a very very unique suite normally they are not um, grouped like this which is why when you see the price don't be alarmed because it's two sets two bundles and a lot of stuff so the reason i want to explain that to you is this when you do see any of our items that are classified as a suite you only have to put in one code so 
um, let me try to scoop this up to you. You only have to put in one code. So that would be this right here, okay? Otherwise, all the items you can put in individually. Whenever you see a bundle, you save 10%, okay? This particular suite is on back order until July 13th. That's okay. Just because it's on back order does not mean that you cannot get it. I was not, I could have not shown it to you, but the reason why I did is because I had planned on showing this to you and you still want to go ahead and get it because as soon as it does come back in, you're first on the list to get it before it possibly goes on further back order, okay? So the reason I want to show you this is um, I love how they have it laid it out in the catalog, okay? And so the reason I'm showing you both sets is because uh, the jar of flowers is images, the ball jar, the flowers, etc., and the sister's stamp set that I, call, I like to call it has some sentiments. And you saw me um, a month or two ago when, the pre, when we got to pre-order, one of the perks of being a demonstrator is I did my in colors with the sunflower. And that has some really pretty sentiments, which is why I'm bringing that one in, which is how I did this one. Okay, I'll explain the card in just a second. Some unique features about this particular stamp set is you'll see this unique little image down here. It says reversibles. So what this means is some of the stamped images in here, I'm going to show you, it literally means that you get to stamp on both sides of the stamp set, which is what I'm gonna be showing you how we're going to be doing that today. So again, you can purchase items individually for this suite, or you can group it together with one code. Good morning, Deborah from Kansas City. Thank you for joining us today. Or again, when you see things that are in a bundle, you wanna make sure that if you see the word bundle, you've gotta make sure you put the bundle code in to save your 10%. When I first started, I made the mistake, and even though it was a bundle, I put them in individually and I didn't get the 10%. So again, if you see it as a bundle, make sure you put the code in as a bundle to save your 10%. Let me see if I can show you any more tricks um, uh, about uh, anything. Again, I showed you that it's reversible, 10% off, and then we'll walk through some of the other things. These, the one, one of the other reasons why I really like this set is it's using a bunch of the new in colors again and uh, this one is we're using the flowers for every season. I showed you that a couple of weeks ago. I absolutely love, love, love this paper set. And when you see the card that we are gonna be making today, um, again, these are reversible. They're six by six and this whole set, what I'm trying to show you is how you can use one paper set front and back and you can take one stamp set and because we have sunflowers, we have roses, we have tulips, how different it can look. Then what we're also doing is taking the new in color pack. Again, it's all the different in colors and how they're reversible as well and how many cards you can make and how different they can look by just changing them up. So, I've showed you the different packs, okay? And so, let's go ahead and show you some fun things and how completely different they're going to look, okay? So, let's go ahead and get all of our supplies. So, what I've done is, I'm going to go ahead and move the catalog. Again, it's on page 10, if anybody wants to walk along with me okay so we're going to be showing some pretty cool techniques today i'm going to leave the stamp sets up here if anybody has any questions because they are reversible okay and uh, we're going to be using sticky notes today we're going to be using some other fun different products but i'll show you that when we get there i want to make sure i have a scrap piece of paper so if you don't have grid paper 
use um, some printer paper or whatever you have. But again, this is the card that we're going to be making today. It's a fun fold. So what I really like about it is you can stand it up two different ways. Well, good morning, Madison. Thank you for joining us today from Loveland, Colorado. Might be in uh, my downstairs. So when you open it, you go like this, and then you've got flaps, and it's going to open like this. Okay, so then when you stand it up, you can, I, hopefully you can see, but you can either stand it up like this so that you can see it from the front, or you can also stand it up from this way and only see the front. So hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. You can open it from that way, or again, you can open it from that way. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. But I just think that that is so pretty. And I am going to be showing you an effect that I don't know if you can tell. But I actually had um, blue water in there. But when I did a water effect on it, what ended up happening is it took some of that blue away. So I am going to do it darker. So again, uh, Madison said to bring it closer. So you can either... Do it this way and can you see the water effect now okay and then you're gonna open it up and it's gonna be this way okay so hopefully you can see that water effect too close now thank you for telling me I know eventually I'm gonna get it figured out exactly the arrangement I wish I could do it where I could see on the screen, but we'll get there. So I'm actually going to keep that there. Mom, closer to your body, not the screen. Closer to my body, not the screen. It, it was just cutting out the top. Okay, so maybe come down here. Okay, so I'm going to put that here. So where we're going to start is we have our new in color, okay? And what we're going to do as well is I wanted to show you so we're going to be using just jade for this one because I wanted to show you how switching it up how different it can look okay so we're going to start with an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper that that's how our standard packs of paper come we also have 12 by 12 so then what we're going to do is I've already scored it but I do like to have straight edges. So what I'm gonna do is on the, I'm gonna try to do it this way to show you guys in hopes that it'll work, okay? So what I'm gonna do is on the 11 side, we score it at five and a half, okay? So I've done that for you. So we're gonna score that at five and a half, which this is the scoring blade, okay? So this is five and a half. So I hope that you guys can see it clearly, that it's not blurry, okay? Then what we're gonna do is on the eight and a half side, we're gonna score both sides at two and an eighth. So we're gonna do that, score that. And then I flipped it because I don't like having to try to figure out the six and three eighths because of this fold line. So I just scored both sides at two and an eighth. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually see if I if there's not gonna be a glare so that I can see this. Oh Lord, what did I do with my gut? They're on my head. Okay, then I'm going to cut off the top part. So I'm gonna take my actual cutting blade and cut until I come up to that score line. Okay, because what I'm trying to do is cut off these top two pieces. And so you wanna come up to that cut line. And I always kind of look up so to make sure that I don't go too far because I don't wanna go too far. And then if I don't come far enough, then I'll just use my scissors, okay? So that's perfect. And then I fold it over to make sure, okay? So, yep, that's perfect, okay? Then I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing is I'm gonna cut on that score line, okay? To make sure that I've got a nice, good cut, okay? 
again, I'm going to cut down to that score line. Okay, just a little bit more. A little bit more. And fold that over and then make sure that it's nice and straight. And perfect. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and take that out, move the trimmer. Okay, and then actually I need a little bit cleaner cut. I'm trying to do it upside down and let's see. I think I'm actually going to start over. Hold on. Just a second. I don't like the cut of that one. So we're going to go ahead and do that again. So I'm going to score at five and a half. Okay. So let's go ahead and score at five and a half. Okay. And then I'm going to score on that eight and a half inch side at two and an eighth. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it completely around and do two and an eighth again, okay, all the way down, okay. And then while I'm there, go ahead and cut down to that score line a little bit more, a little bit more. Perfect. And then continue to cut, move it over and cut at that two and an eighth, okay. And there's a little line on the cutting blade if you can, it's hard to see it, but that's how you can kind of tell. So that's good enough. So now what we're gonna do, okay, I think Carol has joined us maybe, I can tell by the barn. Then what we're gonna do is fold that over, line it up, okay? Take the scoring bone folder, go like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here make sure I'm in the screen over here okay and then do the same thing here okay and there you have it so this is going to give us okay and then what we're going to do Oh my goodness, did I cut the wrong end again? Yes, I just didn't cut the other end. I didn't cut the full, the full side off. And so I'm just gonna use my scissors. So sometimes we make shift, right? So I'm just gonna cut these off on that score line, okay? Do the other side here. Okay, so the look that we're getting is just like this, just like this one, okay? So again, we're doing this, and so then we have it like this. So then we're gonna flip it up and just like this. And I may need to change my blade because it is not, I'm not liking at all the measurement on this, but I can come in and fix that so that I don't waste your time. So that's probably what I'll end up doing because what we're going to do now is, let me clean up my scraps here. Okay, so now we have our measurements. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you how it's going to work to match this. So we have our DSP that's going to go here, okay? Then we're going to have our strip, which is this one here. And again, I have all of the measurements on the PDF, okay? This is going to be this strip right here which is going to be a stamping technique that I'm going to show you. And then we're going to open it up and it's going to go like this. So I've got your strips for you. And so we're going to be doing here. And then we're going to put the DSP there and there. And then we open it up and we do the same thing. And we're going to do that there and that there. 
and that there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that first. So let's go ahead. And while I've been waiting for my Do Not Disturb was on, so hopefully my daughter Madison can call her sister to tell her that I'm live. Um, so I don't know how that rang because it was on Do Not Disturb, so I apologize for that. But uh, my daughter Abby is a flight attendant, so she must be getting ready to get on a trip. Okay. The only bad thing about this adhesive is, boy, once it's down, it's down. So now I'm trying to hurry and I just need to calm down because we're live and everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. That would be a one fun one for students to do some kind of book with that cut. Yes, it definitely would. Okay, so let's get back on track here. I just wanted to have a real laid back coffee and a card today and um, let you guys know how much I appreciate you being here with me today and that I love days like this where it's just kind of rainy out and um, I like knowing what all of you are up to. So now I'm just going to put it these on the inside of the flaps as well as on the outside of the straps, okay? So, again, we're just doing the exact same thing on the inside. Normally, I would not be using this gun and this adhesive, but again, I've been waiting for my new adhesive to come from Stampin' Up! because I ran out of my snail and we have new adhesive that is replacing the snail and for those demonstrators that have received their um, packets already I have been hearing wonderful reviews that they are absolutely loving their new adhesive so I'm excited to get it um, so as soon as I receive I'm supposed to get it on Monday I thought I would have gotten it um, by yesterday or today but that's okay I'll get it and got some fun things to show you and we'll be doing our monthly kits. So hopefully you'll be joining me for that. And again, if you have any birthdays that you would like to contact me about, I'd be happy to help you do some kits for that. Or maybe you, since we're getting to reopen, maybe you need a ladies night with something fun. There's definitely some fun new sets that are, and I really like this new catalog, for sure. Okay, I'm just going to flip that around and glue this one down. What I really like is showing how it can look, I really like how this one turned out, and it looks like it's, you know, it can be intimidating and it looks like it was really hard, but in reality, it's just steps, and in my opinion, anybody can do it. And so there we have it so far, okay? And we can go ahead and glue this step down because the reason I also like to do this is to get a lot of my steps out of the way so that I have room to do my stamping and more of my technique type stuff because I like to work with the cleaner area. And you'll see what I mean when we start to do the techniques, okay? So we're just gonna center this. Okay, so there we have that, okay, and so as you can see, this is what we have so far. We open it up and then we have our open flaps and I'm uh, going to go ahead and start with our fun mason jar on the front. So I'm going to put that there, put this aside for a minute. Now let's get to the fun stamping and the techniques. Okay, so again, uh, we have the, diff the two different stamp sets. I have some blends that I'll explain those in just a minute. And there's two different ways we're going to do these techniques. I'm going to be doing a technique called masking. 
And you can do it one of two ways. You can take a sticky note, and I'm gonna show you how I did that, or you can stamp directly on it. For those of you that follow me, and don't forget to like, comment, or share, because you know I've been trying to do this more and more, so the more people that follow me and share, the more I can be earning points and bon you know prizes to be able to share, and so, um, I do have a fun thing that I want to announce that anybody who does comment your birthday, I'm going to be doing a drawing for um, today's card. So everybody who wants to share their birthday, I am again doing a drawing and you will receive today's card. So for those of you that follow me, I like to have all of my stamps that I'm using on my blocks already to make it go a little faster. So what I did is, this is called masking. So you take your stamped image because on the ball jar, you, it, what happens is I didn't want it to look like my ball jar was, be, was um, on top of the flowers. I, wanted, I mean behind, I wanted it to look like it was actually in the jar. So I did what's called masking it so that it looks like it was on the top of the jar mom's cute barn pops up then goes to a heart very cute yes that's true and so how you get that effect is you go like this so this is the image that we're going to be working with so the first thing that we do and again this stamp set has either sunflowers roses tulips etc so since i already did the effect with the sunflowers i wanted to show you how to do the roses so we're using the memento ink because I'm going to be using blends, so we want to make sure that we use the Memento ink. So I'm going to go ahead and first stamp the first image directly on my Whisper White cardstock. So I'm using the rose, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp my photopolymer ink on the Memento, and I'm going to grab my mat. Even though this, I have a mat here, I want to show you guys that when you are using the photopolymer stamps, you do want to stamp on a mat because it gives it better stamping, okay? And it looks like I may not have a full image on there. This is why I like to use my Stamparatus because in case I don't get a full image, then I can restamp it. Love those stamps. Perfect for canning season coming up. That's why I thought it would be fun to do that. So I'm going to um, get as close to the top as I can because this is the piece that I want to use and make sure it's where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp it, okay, and take it off and then make sure that I still have enough room for my ball jar and it's hard to do it without standing up so bear with me, perfect. So then what we're going to do is this is what's called masking, okay. So what we're going to do now is you take a, make sure I don't have any, you take a sticky note or you can also just take it on a piece of white paper and cut it out. But I liked to have a little piece of sticky, but I went ahead and on my sunflower, I showed it that you can also use it without a sticky. You don't need a sticky, um, but it's, it's your preference. So what I did is you stamp, whoops. You stamp again, and you really don't need it on the full image because what we're doing, let me show you the concept of what we're doing. What's going to happen is you're going to layer this on here, and then we're going to stamp over that again with the ball jar to give that effect to make sure that you're touching each other and so that it gives it a layered effect. So you're going to be able to reuse this several times, okay? So that's why, um, and then you wanna make sure that the sticky note is on the part that you want to make sure is gonna be layering it. So take your sticky note and put it on the bottom part. And I'm just gonna show you again how I did that. And then you'll fussy cut that out, okay? So make sure sticky note's upside down, stamp it where you want it, okay? Again, just like that. Perfect, and then you'll fussy cut it. Fussy cut is, you take your scissors, cut it all the way around, 
like this, which is what I've already done, and then you're done. And then you'll reuse this several times, and then you'll go like this. So we're done with this stamp set to do that, okay? So then what we're gonna do now is now we have our image stamped on here, and now we want to go ahead and stick that down because we're gonna be stamping over that. Again, this technique is called masking, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and take the ball jar. Again, these are reversible stamp sets. So there's a um, flat edge and a lifted edge. I want it to show all of these images. So I'm using this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp. Again, these are photopolymer. So I'm gonna use my mat. Oh, so you don't have to color it yellow. No, it's a sticky note. <laughs> Well, you can if that's the image that you want. Oh my gosh, good morning, Christy. How are you? Okay, so again, I'm gonna be coming over the flowers just a little bit to make sure that my jar is over the flowers, okay? And then hold that down. So do you see, and I'm not taking it off yet because I also have my stems that I wanna make sure also come up to the top of the jar, okay? But I wanna do those in a shade of green. We do not have our new in colors, well, I'll get mine Monday because I didn't come in in time. So I'm going to do what's called stamping off with one of the colors that's close enough of called shaded spruce, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm taking shaded spruce and one nice thing about having your little scrap over here is I'm gonna take my stems and I'm gonna stamp just lightly, and I'm gonna stamp off, okay? And then again, I'm gonna come up to the stems of where I roughly want it, make sure I'm in the jar, okay? And there's my stems, okay? Now I'm gonna close my... So did you understand, this technique is called stamping off. If you don't want the full image of the darkness, you do what's called stamping off. You stamp once and then you stamp again and it gives it that lighter effect. Now I'm gonna take off my scotch, my sticky note, and that way it looks like the flowers are on top of the jar, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and start coloring. And so what I'm going to do is, this one's a little bit different. Uh, let's, let's grab the card to see the colors. So what I did is I'm trying to match best I can since I don't have the in colors. So um, I'm doing light and dark, okay? So what I did with the stems, oh, I have one more to show you. This one, again, is a reversible stamp, okay? So what I'm gonna do with this one is this one has images like this. I don't want that side. I want the reversible image because I want it to be a solid. I originally stamped off and I used the color Seaside Spray, which is last year's in color. I stamped off because I thought that the water look would be too dark. But when I gave it the water look, that I'm gonna show you that technique with the liquid glue, it took off too much blue in my opinion, so I'm not gonna stamp off so that we can see what it looks like, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that solid side, and again, I'm not gonna stamp off, okay? I'm gonna show you the difference. So this is regular, so see how that's solid instead of the lines? You see lines, but that's the other side and that's the solid, and then that's if I were to stamp off. So it gives you two different shadings. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-stamp it, because I wanna have solid to give my water, because when I put my liquid glue on it, to give it the water look, that is going to shade a little bit. And I actually do think I like it darker for this one. Anyway, because it brings in the blue. So I actually really like that. What do you guys think? I actually like it darker. Okay, so then I'm gonna put these over here and make sure that they get cleaned. 
So now we're going to start coloring. So I'm going to take the shaded spruce light, which is the closest that we have right now to the end color. And I'm going to work my way up the stems. Okay. And nothing has to be perfect. I'm going to try to go as fast as I can. Uh, I absolutely love our blends. You can see how fast it goes. And if you're sitting in front of the TV or if you're at a doctor's appointment or on a road trip, on the airplane, um, like I said, my daughter's a flight attendant, so um, we all travel a lot. This is very medicinal when uh, we are traveling. So um, that's one of the things that I love about this. So I'm just going to come in. And this is actually the light, so I'm going to actually shade the whole leaf and I'm going to show you what I mean about coming in with the light and dark shades. So I'm going to come over the whole leaf first, okay? This is going to give it quite a different look than the actual in color, but that's okay. Like I've said, nothing has to be perfect and I actually think I'm going to come in with these two. Just a little bit, maybe come in with some yellows. And then these are alcohol based again. So it does take them a little bit to absorb and then they spread and you'd be surprised how much they change colors too. Um, but these, you can make these whatever colors you want and you'll be surprised how much they change in color. Okay. And how much just adding just a little bit, it just adds such pretty dimension and I'm just trying to go fast so I don't take a lot of your time so that we can get to some of the other fun techniques. And so this color is called Rococo Rose and this is the dark. So I'm actually going to do the light first so I can go fast with it. I'm going to shade the whole roses first. Go real fast. So see how fun one stamp set, a pack of paper, how different going from sunflowers to roses, but using the same concept, how fun and different they can look. Okay, and just going real fast over the whole thing. I would have had this pre-done, but I needed to show you the different masking technique so that you would know how to layer it. You can put it directly on there. And then I'm also going to show you that we have a punch that goes with this set that also is a fun one. Now I'm going to come in with the dark and just add some layering again. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Just add some different shading. You can go perfect along the lines if you want, but you don't have to. And um, you get the idea. Uh, let's see. And I can come back and fill in more later, but I just wanted to give you an idea. But what I thought would be fun too is I'm going to come in with some of the seaside spray that matches this water. So again, I'm just going to come in and it also brings in some of this blue that's in here. So I'm just going to come in real fast with some of this blue. Okay. And maybe add some over here. So does anybody have any special plans today? Since the weather kind of hit us for a change. Add in some darkness there. For those of the, you that have received your new catalogs, is there anything special that you've been admiring? I know some of you have ordered. Okay. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, I think that's enough for now because now what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna get everything on the card actually and then show you the last step technique because we're gonna have to have it dry. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take our little strip. Oh, we'll just take this one. And the strip is cut at three and three quarters. So let's trim this down. Let's see. Three and three quarters. 
and a half. So let me trim this down to three and three quarters. And let's go ahead and get this stamp and stamp the inside, get it glued, and then I'll show you the fun technique. So this one I used, thanks a bunch. And I wanted to go ahead and use the new in color that did come in the paper pumpkin for this month, Misty Moonlight. Again, if you have not ordered this month's paper pumpkin, you have to do it by the 10th. It's that new fun one that I've been showing the um, sunshine. It has to be ordered by the 10th. So this is going to say thanks a bunch. Okay. Uh, I don't like that. So let's flip it over. One nice thing about stamping is if you don't like it, flip it over. Because it is kind of hard to do it in without trying to get into the camera. So make sure it's upside down the right way. Okay. Okay, let's see. I think I'm getting some ink on the edge there, so I'm going to... Sometimes it's good to look at your stamps before stamping on these smaller images. So I had some stamping there. So that one actually doesn't look bad. So we'll just go with that one. So on our image, let's go ahead and glue this down in the center. Okay. And another thing I'm going to want to add is some Winkastella. I didn't add Winkastella on my first one. And boy, anytime you're dealing with flowers, it's nice to bring them up too, right? So let's go ahead and put this in the center. Okay, I need to move this out of the way. So let's put this about here. And let's use some glue dots for this one. And I like to use my pick tool to do this, but I've shown you guys lots of techniques today, so I don't want to keep you too long, but I've enjoyed showing you the techniques. Do you guys like learning new techniques, or do you like easier cards on Saturdays? Then what we're going to do is take our new in color enamel dots. And I think that for today, we're going to go ahead and do the blue. So I'm going to take our pick tool and take the blue. Come on, little guy. Oh, wait, actually. Well, I didn't have pink, so I will just stick with blue. I didn't have our new pink, so I'll just stick with the blue. Okay. So there's that so far, and then we'll put ribbon on it. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and stamp the inside with a rose and get our coloring done. So while we have our rose, I think let's go ahead... Mm, and stamp that with the memento black as well. But I think I'm going to stamp off a little bit so that we don't have to stamp the whole thing. Okay. And maybe just... Yep. So see how just a little bit adds just enough? And then I'm going to go ahead and come back in with the Misty Moonlight again for my sentiment. Okay. Just enough. And I'm going to send it. Know that you are loved. Put that right in the middle. Oh, snickerdoodle. Well, that's not straight. So I'm going to restamp that. Okay. Go ahead and stand back up and make sure not to rush it. Much better. And I'm going to go ahead and restamp my rows. Nothing has to be perfect and things can be redone. Okay. And I actually think I like it this way better anyway. 
perfect. And I kind of like that little shading where it's off just a little bit. Put these over here to be washed. And now this one is ready to be glued down. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. And then we can color it because I don't wanna hold you guys up for too much longer. Oh, good morning, Kayla, how are you? I was just explaining, Kayla, that anybody who hasn't signed up for the paper pumpkin, um, by the 10th, you're gonna wanna make sure you do so before it's too late. I know that you had inquired. Um, I know you and your kids love the sunflowers. This is what we're doing today. And then this is a different version. So this is what we have so far on this one. Okay, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take some Wink Estella, our Wink Estella pen makes it shiny. Who doesn't love shiny, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add some Wink Estella on the flowers, okay? I don't know if you can tell, but it's amazing how much just adding some shine, how pretty that is and how much it adds to it. Okay, and the reason I'm doing this now and showing you is because the technique that I'm gonna show you to make the water is pretty fun too, but that takes time to dry. Okay, so I'm gonna do that there and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and add the blue ribbon so we'll go ahead and add the um, Misty Moonlight. So let's do a quick bow because before I add the, um, let me see if I can do a quick bow. Before I add the liquid glue, we need to make sure <coughs> that everything's done because you don't want anything to get wet, okay? So let's just make sure that this is the color that I want too. Oh, I think that's perfect. Okay, so take my ribbon shears, snips. That's why I've got ribbon on it because it's only to be used for ribbon, okay? I think that's good. And then I'm gonna take my blue dot Flip it over and then stick it directly on my dot. And then that pops right off. And then that goes right on my flower. And then voila. Okay, so what do you guys think so far? I love it. Love, love, love. So now let's go ahead and move everything out of the way. And I'm going to show you how I got this fun water effect, okay? So, here's the two cards, and let's get everything moved out of the way. And I'm going to show you how I get got the water effect, okay? And again, if anybody has any questions, um, just let me know. You can email me, private message me. Again, if you have not received a catalog, please, I'm happy to get you a catalog. So what I'm gonna do to get this water look, can you see that? Can you see that it looks like water? It's so hard to tell with the, um, so I, I do like how I did the darker seaside spray to make it look more like the darker water because Believe it or not, this was blue, but once I put the liquid glue on it to give it that effect, then it did take away some of that blue. So all I did, so this way we have everything ready so that it has time to dry, okay? So again, let me show you one more time what the card looks like. You open it up, and then it's got the flaps, and then this is this, and then I'm gonna come back in and color that to not take your time on the Saturday morning so that I can show you this effect. So all I did was I took my liquid glue and I started and just started to spread over the blue. And then you just 
kind of spread it with your needle. Okay, can you see that well enough? And you just spread it around and it comes out pretty fast. So you doesn't take much. And there you have it. So I wish you could see what it looks like. I don't know how close up I can show you without it getting blurry, but there you have it. And then you just wait for it to dry. So I definitely like that I went darker with the blue this time because it will pick up the color as well. So there you have it. Same stamp set, same paper packs, and two completely different looks. So let me know what you guys think. Again, for anybody who wants to leave their birthday, I'm going to be pulling a drawing and whose ever birthday I draw will receive one of these in the mail. So again, thank you for joining me on this Saturday morning. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And that's how I get to stay on and continue to do lives. Don't forget to start following me on YouTube as well as I'm going to start doing YouTubes. And um, thank you so much. And have a very blessed, happy weekend. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.